guys, we're hosting our first comedy show called The Headline. It's full of nationally touring comedians. We have a big guest drop in who's been seen on Kill Tony. And no, it's not Uncle Laser. <laughs> it's February 9th, I believe, at Doors Open at 7, show at 8. It's at a sick music venue that also hosts like concerts and after parties and events like that with bands and DJs. And it is absolutely gorgeous in downtown Miami. And tickets will be just go to our Instagram, our two girls, one blunt pod Instagram in the bio. The tickets will be there. Mm -hmm. We hope to see you. It's going to be a sick show. It's a sick venue. That's like comedy is our new comedy group. So follow That's Lit Comedy on Instagram if, if you love us, if you're a real one. We're trying to host comedy shows in Miami that, um, so that we can get more experience and build the scene down yeah. here. Yeah. I want to know who's going to pop out like from listening if we have people in Miami who are going to come out because they're going to be great shows. I'm very excited. If you do come, come up to us and, and tell us you found out here. Tell us we did a good job because honestly, no one has in a while. Yeah, we need that. (laughs) Our survival depends on it, actually. So that being said, let's get to the episode. We love you. Hey, girl, you trying to hit this? Oh, you know exactly what I need. All right, boys and girls. Boys and girls, mission successful. I wanted to get violently... Hi. You look violently <laughs> high. I feel like I'm always the one violently high. I'm violent. <laughs> You're I violent. Just, Makes sense. I'm, yeah, I'm a violent offender. I'm not allowed within 300 feet of <laughs> humans. You just go fight people. That's your thing. <laughs> just walk up to people on the street and cold cock them. <laughs> wow, cold cock. I haven't heard that since I was abused by my mother. <laughs> What does that even mean? A yeah, cold cock. <laughs> like, like, I think hit you, like, out of nowhere, right? Yeah, like, like square in the face. Bitches. Where did that come from? Mom? <laughs> <laughs> she used to say that? Yeah. Oh, damn. That just, um, that just triggered a memory. Like, I that think that's like a something. Boston thing, then. Cold cocked. Like, cold cock, yeah. I feel like I remember that, <laughs> and that's why I said it. I feel like I should call my Boston mother and ask her. Oh, God. Cold cock fight. <laughs> cold <laughs> and it's gonna look up <laughs> wait, what's cold cocking? To knock someone unconscious with a fist. <laughs> to cold cock someone is to punch that person hard enough that he or she passes out. Cold cocking someone is more serious than a regular punch because it implies that someone passed out from the punch. So many ways to say they got knocked out. It's a vicious move. It would not ever be done in a play. In play. Cold cocking is harsh and cruel move intended to cause a great amount of pain. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I thought it just meant punching someone. Well... <laughs> My mom was like, make sure they go out. If you're, if you're going to knock them, if you're going to hit them. Yeah, if you're going to hit them. Hit them hit hard. hard. Hey, guys, welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> and we're going to start this off by saying, did we do sober January? No. No. But <laughs> I didn't drink for like a while. January has felt like a year. So I feel like I've learned a lot this January. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I have been through shit this month. What do you want shit? to elaborate? No, I don't even know. I just feel like I've gone through it. <laughs> <laughs> Emily's been. I started going to the gym again. That's how you know I'm going through Wait, it. Wait, you're turning 25. This I'm is turning your... 26. Oh, I'm old. This is your midlife crisis. Yeah, I'm going through it. Yeah. Quarter cent- <gasps> My quarter century crisis. Yep. Oh, it was midlife like in your four- 30s, 40s. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was at 25. Maybe people used to not live that long. I don't know. <laughs> how are you emily i'm doing good (laughs) i'm so high we just smoked laughing gas by joey coco diaz as we have been for like every episode and i'm violently high like violently like somebody cold cocked me with this weed yeah we did quit vaping for like what three days i think i made it yeah like two days (laughs) that's that's good enough (laughs) <laughs> that's good enough for government work that's what my daddy always said <laughs> good enough long enough good enough for that pension <laughs> remember when pensions were like a thing are they not anymore no i think they still are but like <laughs> never heard of them or haven't heard of them in a while yeah where'd they go <laughs> pension sounds too much like detention i think of like the post office when i think of pensions 
You think of old people. Yeah. Do they give you like a, is it like a bonus? Mm. Let's look up what a pension is. <laughs> <laughs> Who brought up pensions? <laughs> Did I bring them up? Yeah. Why are we looking up pensions? <laughs> Why are we looking Emily's a grandma at heart. You what? Like you're pensions. an old lady. A re- regular payment I made. I walk into Emily. She throws her phone down like a sketchy boyfriend. And I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? She's like, reading a book. I think I dropped weed down my cleavage. And now it's super itchy. And I'm having an allergic reaction in between my tits. I get that. <laughs> I get that. Yeah, that's when you got to wear like a separate bra, you know? Oh, you got to so let them breathe. Itchy. I got to like... Yeah, that's the worst. I gotta just go like this for Sometimes a second. Sometimes I just stuff like a paper towel down <laughs> in between your tits. Yeah, honestly, that sounds like it'd be soothing. Cause right just now, like I cut it and like shape it. I don't know, just a little bit down there, so it doesn't get sweaty. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> Big boobs are hard. Okay. I know. Where was I that I was sweating under my tits so bad? Oh, what, Sunday for Rick's birthday mm-hmm. in Fort Lauderdale. It was like 80 something degrees. I was walking in little, you know, my little outfit I was wearing. I yeah. was sweating. My really? t- tits, armpits, everything. Thank God I was wearing an athleisure, like an athletic shirt. It because didn't show through. I was so sweaty and hot and uncomfortable. And I was like, this is gross. <laughs> I felt like my makeup was dripping down my face. People keep kept looking at me. I was like, don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst feeling. You know? I do not I want to be perceived right now. Yeah, not at all. There was a guy I was like, I know, he went up to the girl and he was like talking to her and I was like, how do I know you? And he was like, I think we follow each other on Instagram. And then I was like, how do you know him? And she was like, hinge. And I was like, that's where. <laughs> I don't think we ever really talked. I might have like ghosted him or he probably ghosted me. I love meeting random people out who like had like a. Just a little interaction. And you're yeah. like, oh, that person just like really popped into my existence or my reality because they're not real until yeah. you meet them yeah like they don't exist isn't that weird people aren't real until they're in front of you and then they aren't real when they're gone no they're gone so why are they real all you have is what's in the moment yeah bars we have adhd <laughs> <laughs> an object permanence issue <laughs> <laughs> yeah my dad used to be like is it fucked up that like when somebody's like i don't see them every day I don't miss them. And I didn't understand it until I became an adult. But, like, I do kind of forget about people. And I have to remind myself to check in on people so that I'm not... I feel abandoned when they don't hit me up. But then I'm also abandoning them. So I've had to adjust a lot of behaviors based on maintaining friendships. Does that make (sighs) sense? That was a lot to digest. Or is that really high thoughts? No, no, that's so true. I struggle with reaching out to people because i literally forget they exist and that doesn't devalue them at all no, because when i, I remember them. that they exist i'm like i love that mm-hmm. person and like i want to like pour into them but when i'm busy let's say it's for a week or two weeks and sometimes depending on where they're at in your life that might go longer yeah you know but it doesn't mean that they don't mean as like mean a lot yeah you literally only have the capacity to have like two friends how are people out here having full groups of friends how do you give everyone that much attention do you see the brides that have like 20 bridesmaids i'm like how do you have that many friends who are actually in your corner that seems because they're not really friends yeah there's no way how do you, unless every hangout is a group thing, but you know there's dynamics oh, where there's clicks sure. and they're like, did you hear what Britney said about you? <laughs> you know? Oh God, girl friendships like in big groups are so interesting to watch unfold. Like I used to work at a, a after school program and I would see like the 12 year olds kind of like bully the nine year olds and then choose, As they should. <laughs> choose the select nine year olds that could come into the cool gang. And it was like interesting to see girl dynamics. I used to be the outsider to the friend groups. So I used to watch everyone have this like core group and always do things together. And I was like the floater in between all the friend groups. Like whether it was like the theater kids or the soccer girls or people in my grade or people in another grade. There was like little groups that I became. I was friends with everyone, but I didn't have my own group. Mm. And it used to make me feel very like isolated from the like groups of girls so and then i used to watch because i was an outsider they would all tell me everything about everybody and i was like these people hate each other 
Everyone hates everyone. Everyone hates each other, but they just don't want to be alone, so they stick in these giant grooves. But I would rather just have a few select people. And I feel like that's what I had most of my childhood growing up was like three to five people that I would hang out with semi-regularly, but never really part of a group. And then in high school, I got that friendship but I was still somehow like that friendship group dynamic, but I was the one on the outside. Like there were little clicks within like the friendship. Mm -hmm. And I realized growing up that they were kind of like mean and I was mean with them. Like in the year that we were friends. Cause you would do things to, mm -hmm. to feel accepted because we all want to be a part of a group. But you know, it's so funny. Like we were theater kids. <laughs> None of us were fucking cool, bro. Like, the things that I used to do to get people to like me, mm -hmm. I like look back and it's I'm so cringed at like myself, but I just was like a little kid who wanted to make friends like when it's like it was that innocent and it's it's cool to like know who I am right now to an extent where I don't have to do that in group settings anymore. You don't have to like beg for scraps of attention. Yeah. That's what it felt like. That's what it felt like. Because you weren't getting it at home. So like you were looking for it. I elsewhere. was looking for any sort of connection and I just like felt extremely isolated. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that Taylor Swift song that was like on the outside looking in? No, I that's like Jordan Pruitt. That. That's Jordan Pruitt. On the oh. outside looking in. Oh, you don't know what it's like to feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what it's like to do. Hold on. Wait, and is it The Outsiders? No, it's called The Outside Looking In. It's Jordan Pruitt. Oh, I was thinking of Taylor Swift. Wait, hold okay. on. Okay, I was thinking of a totally different song. Wait, but hold on. This is so- On the outside looking in. Ready? Oh, different song. You don't know anything about me. As you can tell, I used to listen to this a lot. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm actually... All right, ready? This is so sad. Not who you think I am. Ready? <laughs> Chance. You don't know what it's like. Oh. We were so emo back then. And you don't know how it feels to be your own best friend. <laughs> On the outside looking. <laughs> and that's our 30 <laughs> I'm laughing because this is so sad. <laughs> Wait, why can't I find my I song? used to listen to this and be like, you don't. <laughs> Just be in my room. And they don't know. We're going to have to cut a little bit more of that to fit like 10 seconds for YouTube. But yeah, that's so annoying that we can't play copyrighted music. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so stupid. If you make music, why don't you want to share it? What is the point of like, I get it. Like other people can't use it for monetary, but like. Because you want to be able to like have everyone stream on a platform that you make money for the streams. But I think there's something yeah. beneficial to artists who give back to their communities. So Luke Combs just refunded an entire concert in like like a guard, like a theater. It was huge. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm he was sick or th I think or something where he couldn't sing to his full potential. So he didn't feel like it was worth the money that people spent on the concert. Aww. So he's like, we're still going to play the concert but we're refunding everyone that That's is going to beautiful. go towards him 10 times by get, by like giving to your fans and your community and that's, shit. That's a beautiful thing. It was beautiful. Oh, I was like, there are good people in the world. Meanwhile, I don't even know what's going on, but like I, Nicki Minaj and um, Megan Thee Stallion are like beefing. Yeah. There's something going on where Nicki's like taking jabs at Megan. Megan released a song and the lyrics were like <laughs> making alluding to Nikki having a husband who is a sexual predator like a child sexual predator right which is just a fact megan's law i think is like i think it like is alluding to like the laws around it or something mm. i don't know and then that night Nikki records like on her phone voice memos a song and releases it like Sorry. doesn't even get like a studio or anything like aren't you a celebrity and like that rich Shouldn't you be able to just like snap your fingers and have a team? Yeah. Or are these like the delusions where I think people have us? I swear I we've hung out people that have stuff like that. Nicki Minaj should have all that. But she releases it off of her phone 
And then, and then I saw she was going to drop it at like 3 like p.m., then 6 p.m., then 9 p.m., then midnight. Like she kept delaying the drop because yeah. she wasn't prepared. Yeah, I don't know. I live for celebrity drama, <laughs> but I don't it's know anything you about it. Nothing else to live for. Nothing else to live for, no. Wow. Forever depressed <laughs> we are. <laughs> See, I always thought I would die young, but I'm getting older and I'm not dead yet. So, like, you know what's so funny is I feel like in our brains, like, we've always been this, like, we're, like, very positive, but also very cynical (laughs) and, like, dark and sad. And you would think with, like, our lives changing or, like, different route, like, you know what I mean? Like, what you think it would be, happiness isn't that. (laughs) (laughs) I've been searching all my life. Where is the happiness, guys? Like, <laughs> it's not, you know. I mean, in the moments, it made our depression way easier. I think. Yeah. You know, I look back and I'm like, I would take the mansion and the butlers while I was sad. No, there are blips, like yeah. of happiness, but you'd think it would solve everything. What do you like, want from me, buddy? I don't know. Hi. Some guy DM'd me. Wait, what did he say? Never mind. I can't remember what he said. What did he say? think of it emily you got it it's in your brain access the memory (laughs) you got this we have to cherry in our superpowers on december 9 1964 (laughs) (laughs) i was a pilot (laughs) the plane was going down fast (laughs) (laughs) the co-pilot's unconscious next to me (laughs) we're nose diving (laughs) Oh, 154 <laughs> passengers behind me. Are you the thunder and lightning? <laughs> I was the snakes on the plane. <laughs> oh man, guys, we missed you. Did you miss us? Uh, just us? Just me and Em? Just our voices? <laughs> just only us? Did you miss us? Did Take a shot every time we say <laughs> us. <laughs> us? <laughs> I won't me. knock somebody's yum. What is it? I won't yuck, yuck somebody's, somebody's yum. yum. Yeah. Honestly, we should yuck people's yum. I don't think everything deserves to be a yum. You deserve to be yucked at. Do we need to yuck more people's yums? We need to yuck everyone's yums. <laughs> Even our own? Sometimes. Honestly, I look back at previous yums and I'm like, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yuck, yuck, yum. Yuck, yuck. Then yuck. you go back for a little more and you're like, yum, 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 yuck. yum, yuck. And then it goes right back to yuck after you, you know, mm-hmm. yum. <laughs> and then if somebody just yucked my yum in the beginning i wouldn't have to be like yuck after i had my yum if they could just yum the whole time <laughs> that would be great <laughs> i'm not asking where's for the yuck. yum where's the good yums where are the yums <laughs> the yums are all yummed up fuck or yay yuck <laughs> <laughs> that's a clip <laughs> uh, oh anyway good shit good <laughs> shit <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying anyways, and I know it's gonna be the nervous tick on stage, so I have to stop saying that. Is like a I think that anyways is better than like saying like <laughs> or um. That's true, but I do all of the above. So. No, no, your your. I think I say like, and I also move around and like look down and like shake my head. Mm. Yours is the sigh. I sigh. You go. <sighs> interesting in between like a lot of things you say it's only sometimes when when, like when you're in the zone you don't do it as much Mm. because you're in the zone but it's the nights that like you're not in the same like nights i'm not in the zone i say like a lot or i'm like uh uh i think i swing my arms sometimes too i'm like well (laughs) i was just watching my laugh boston set over and i've had a couple people make comments like of how i don't look as confident on stage i can't tell if this is male comedians just like mad that i am confident on stage but then i was like okay what can i take from this Mm -hmm. and there are some things habits i started picking back up on like grabbing the mic cord i'm a mic grabber i mean the the cord (laughs) cord grabber (laughs) i'm a cord grabber i like twiddle it like i would hair when i'm nervous i do that too i'm constantly touching myself i watch myself on podcasts and i'm like there how do people think i'm that i'm not a little bit on the the speck the trum (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <The trial. laughs> I feel like I'm not allowed to say anything anymore oh. um, You know When I watch myself I'm like that makes so much sense I'm watching Love on the Spectrum and I'm like Everything they say is exactly how my brain thinks I literally And I just love learned to love not say spec- that Yeah But the, the way that they're like very honest in their head and They're like yeah and it's just like that. that's how I think 
or with the way that they give love and their intentions. I'm like, that's how it should be. But neurotypical people like look at that as weird or yeah. like something off. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that's honest and vulnerable. And maybe if we, more of us set these boundaries up front and stood to our standards, we would have happier, healthier relationships. Mm-hmm. I love Danny. She's like, I want a man with an animation studio. And I hope she gets that. Which one's that? She, I love her style. She's she like so the smart cute. one with the glasses. Yeah. And like the, yeah. Yeah. She's very blunt. I watched a clip of her being like, yeah, it's not always about the looks. You can like what's inside. And her date's <laughs> like, oh, yeah. We're talking about love on the spectrum. Did you see the clip of, uh, I forget his name, Connor, I think. He was doing like a speed dating challenge and you cross off and he goes, like no. X or no. But he asked her a question. He goes, how do you feel about nature? And she was like, well, I've never really thought of that. Like, I don't really, I'm more of a city person. I don't really like nature. And right in front of her, he just crosses off the no and like looks at her and she's like, oh. And afterwards, the producer was like, hey, buddy, maybe you should like say cross them off as no after they leave the table. Like. Not while they're right in front of you and he felt so bad. But it, it was just a I funny just clip. love the like rawness. Yeah. It's so it's like human nature at its core of like just honesty. Mm-hmm. It's like if you don't have a filter. And that's a beautiful thing. It is. I remember not having a filter growing up and everyone told me I had to filter myself. And they'd be Everybody. like, you can't talk about this. You can't talk like that. Well, guess what? Now I have a podcast <laughs> with my best friend and Joke's we talk about you. whatever the fuck we want. Yeah, those camp counselors are wrong. I just like how people bullied me. They watch my story. <laughs> they that And now watch your story? Yeah. And they don't engage with me. So I'm like, oh, you're you're surveilling me. Hello, fan. <laughs> What's up? Haters are fans, too. Yeah, but they send evil eye. Yeah. That evil eye is real. Take a bath. If you feel like you're tired or something's low and you're low energy, literally take a bath. I'm dead ass. Put- but also, I am going to an endocrinologist. Because <laughs> I feel like I have hormonal issues. <laughs> I thought I did, too. I got my hormones checked and everything. I got my thyroid checked. I got everything checked. That's what I need to do. You know what helped me? A bath. <laughs> <laughs> a bath and a smoothie and drinking proper amounts of water. You'd be crazy. Yeah. It does wonders for a body. Yeah. But I can't keep having double periods. This is too much. I need to That's get my birth control out. I wonder if it's because you got your gallbladder out. I don't know. Now you're just broken. Maybe. That, that'd be cool. <laughs> Maybe my uterus didn't go back in the proper position. Don't say that. Well. What if you're pregnant? Well. Well, <laughs> I've had so many pregnancy oh. tests. Everyone's like, do you have a kid? I'll be like, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not pregnant. That's how that conversation would go. I'd be on a date and they'd be like, so do you have children? And I would be like, <laughs> no, but I have a room. I have a child as a roommate. <laughs> would it be here? Where would we put it? In your big closet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to have a baby. I'm not pregnant. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. I can't handle a child at this time in my life, Emily. I'm not having a baby. <laughs> like, I I can't afford it. Uh, the I sleep schedule. Bro, I'm killing this I, thing. I can't. I would have to be the support. I'm, I'm no. the man of the house. I have to I'm go out. I'm killing this child. <laughs> I don't think you understand. There is no child to kill, but R.I.P. Harold. You never know. What if there's complications? I've taken like six pregnancy tests. <laughs> <laughs> I've been nervous. <laughs> well, I had to for the doctor because I want to start Accutane. Oh. Were you on Accutane before? No. What happened to the other stuff? <sighs> it just is okay. I want some hard hitting. Lupu went on it and it, she said her whole family has been on it and it works great. Doesn't it do stuff? It does. <laughs> you have to get like blood tested every month to make sure you're not dying. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> yeah. No, you like to live life on the edge. <laughs> it could cause your liver to fail. That's not so We've already good. had one organ fail. <laughs> we <laughs> can't have another one. You know what I Your body's remember? running on 99%. Trevor told me that... Okay, so when I was a skinny kid, like, they used to make me drink, like, three protein drinks a day. Like, those super heavy-duty ones. Mm-hmm. So now I hate protein drinks. But he was like, it makes sense why your gallbladder kicked the bed, because you were just, like, fucked up as a kid. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. 
also the U.S. agriculture system and Bill Gates, but we won't get into <laughs> it. <laughs> my mom and fucking Bill Gates, the pain of my existence. Bill Gates bought Rio Rio sauce, that really good Italian like home like sauce that you can buy. Oh yeah, we and have they, it. So he Rio? has Campbell's. Yeah, they bought it. Okay. And they changed the fucking ingredients. The recipe. They changed the recipe. Sons of bitches. Doesn't taste the same. Bill Gates, you're out here ruining my food, and I'm pissed off. <laughs> Specifically, my <laughs> pasta. If sauce. I end up dead, just know I'm not suicidal, guys. <laughs> I would never kill myself. Not for I, tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I only think about it on Monday to Sunday, but <laughs> I would never do it. No. Ever. Uh, no. But if I did, I'd make I'm it clean. I'm too stubborn. <laughs> You're too stubborn. You're too stubborn too. I think I'm also too stubborn. You are. You're. I literally think you'd you'd go wanting to kill yourself until old age, but you'd be like, <laughs> "I'm no one's taking me but myself." <laughs> I'm like a mule. Yeah. <laughs> I just like keep on trudging through. Yeah, I just think we'd be kids. Yeah, we'd be two stubborn old ladies together, <laughs> just like wanting to die, but like we're like withering away. One leg is caved in on the other. (laughs) I broke a hip. Oh, yeah. That'd be good stuff. (laughs) That should be a sitcom. I break my hip, I army crawl (laughs) to the fridge. I'm like, nothing's stopping me. (laughs) Not but my own fucking self. Oh, God. Well, once these cats die, I'm dying. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that's in like 15 years. Yeah, I'm not going to make it past their lifespan. Okay. The fucking, for some reason, we lost audio right during Emily and I's erotic scene. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know where it left off, but we were about to make out. Um, yeah, but what if, like, we are just gay? I don't know. Sometimes I think about that. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, am I gay? I don't know. Bisexual, for sure. Yeah. But then I'm like, but I I'm don't just know. terrified of women. <laughs> I think about it, too, because, like, if I was to date a man, I would want the ability to, like, make out with girls. But if I was dating a girl, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't care about the ability to make out with men. Interesting. I saw another girl talk about this on TikTok, and she was like, so that means I'm just gay, right? I didn't want to say it, but, yeah, I'm glad somebody else did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was having that realization about herself, and I was like, oh. I just, like, want to be held by men. Like, I don't or want... Or do we just want to be held? Maybe I just want to be held. I don't know. There's something about a man holding you, though. Like, as you cry, I don't know. And you can just let it all out. That's true. I haven't but had I've that. never been able to get as fully close to a woman like that. And I feel like that's because they're the biggest heartbreak. Women are the biggest heartbreak. I feel like it hurts more losing that best friend mm-hmm. than it does a boyfriend you stay yeah. maybe a little more attached to the boyfriend like you know what i'm saying but i feel like the bigger heartbreak is the girl it's like easier to cut off if that makes sense but because it's, it's that hard because it, it's that hard you just have to be done yeah but like that's the one you think about like years Forever. later yeah you Are know what I'm gay? saying? <laughs> we're, that, I, that's what i'm saying the fact that we're even saying this like does that make us gay Bro, I don't Bro, know. Bro, am I gay? Bro, am I gay? Are, should we? Can we hug? <laughs> <laughs> Are we gay? That's the title of this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are we gay? Probably. How to know if you're gay? <laughs> if you, I've Googled that. <laughs> I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like if you Google, how do I know if I'm gay? You're gay. Did you ever look at the lesbian dictionary? No, the lesbian master drive no this was like niche corner of the internet that's like a bunch of questions you should ask yourself if you think you're gay and i was like why am i answering yes to all of these (laughs) emily you're gay surprise no but i love men why because i have to prove myself to them and it's so so that's not even about love and sexual attraction it's about me that's that's (laughs) that's about proving to your father that you're worthy yeah you're worthy, honey. Thank you. Go find a go find a vagina. <laughs> uh, I just think it's so funny. Did we ever talk about how much I, Riz I laid on that girl at the? Oh yeah. Did we Sunshine. talk about that on the pod? I don't know. I, I laid so, so much Riz on this girl in front of all of the guys, and it made me feel like 
powerful the man yeah i was like i'm the man yeah bitches i also think of like sometimes like how i dress makes me question and i'm like maybe you're just a tomboy jamie you do dress like a little bit like more mask i could see that like, i'm you like not right now hands. like i have these moments where i'm like of course i'm a girl absolutely you know but i have these moments we're very feminine. Mm-hmm. And then I have ones where I'm in like, like I stayed, I uh, slept at a friend's house because I, I was drunk and they gave me a sweatshirt in their shorts or like a big giant t-shirt in their shorts. And I was like, this is a dope outfit. I looked at it and, and I had my sneakers on to go outside and smoke in my car. And you're like, hey, you're coming and I looked, with me. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, wait, I kind of love this outfit. Mm. And it was oversized <laughs> men's clothes, like shorts and a, a t-shirt i feel like i would love and it and then i put a bomber jacket over it and i was like see, that's Yo. cute but i have huge tits i would love to do that but it, it makes me look like a tent I, I just gotta get rid of them so i can do that i wasn't wearing a bra so maybe that's why when i don't wear a bra or i wear like a sports bra it makes them smaller yeah so i'll wear sports bras and big t-shirts that like flatten them yeah so that it, like I, my tits don't look as big mm-hmm. i've also been big into wearing like sweatpants I love sweatpants. I've been wearing like the short sweatpants combo. That's cute. So I'm gay. <laughs> You're gay. We're all gay. Have you guys ever had a gay awakening, a gay questioning? I feel like we go through that once a year. So we're gay. 2024, we're going to date women. Um, That's scary. That's so scary. I'm, I don't want to get my heart broken. Not since my mom. Oh my God, I understand men. I get it. Holy shit, I get it. Mind blown. Damn. What are we going to do about this? Maybe we do... Okay, what if we go on gay double dates? <laughs> do you think they'd, our partners would get jealous of our friendship? They would definitely think we're gay. Oh, and we live together? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how... I don't know how... The lesbian I kind of like would- jealousy. <laughs> i'm like okay be jealous you're toxic you're gonna use me as a pawn i no, don't even no. get anything on I the side use you a- <laughs> i'll find you a friend that's assuming i i don't know and I, I feel like i still need yeah women are scary i feel like miami is the most where i've talked to women though really like gay women hmm one that i thought was cute has a girlfriend now so she ignores me and then the other one moved away but they did live here and like we're asking to hang out damn but she also hooked up with my friend so i don't oh. yeah th- i'm already in the drama no i'm just kidding nothing oh. ever happened out of it but i'm so high like i don't think you understand how high i am oh i was gonna say do we get more high <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've been doing that a lot recently i don't know why yes, you're a goofy goober uh, uba tuba i hi bear i got met this like the first guy on hinge and he was like i'm looking to get married and find a life partner and are you like seriously looking for that like what's your goals and shit did he say that via hinge (coughs) message yeah that's a lot Uh, like it was it came casually into conversation i guess so do you want to get married and and then kind of was like flirty in a way that was like i don't know and I'm like, what is that how a good guy actually would act? I was like, or are you love bombing me? Are you secretly a bad man in disguise? Yeah, like, oh, I was like, that's a lot. But it's also what I want. So then I'm like, fuck. I feel like that's like a first date question, right? We got into it deep on him. Oh, okay. Yeah, about like life. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I'm swiping on Bumble. Not What's a lot. That? Only men with mustaches. I'm going for 5'11 and up. Oh, ho. <laughs> we, we. Moving on up in the world. Listen, I did the porn stash phase. <clears throat> Don't do it. You, didn't work out for me. Yeah. You know what? Maybe that's putting negativity on your future experience. Go do it. Ride the stash. No, I think I need to find a man who needs to be made into a porn stash man. So you want to fix somebody? Sense? Yeah. You want to build a bear as a boyfriend? Yeah, that would be great. The build a bear at our old mall was so next to that pet store. That was so sad. It was I a puppy feel like mill. Pe- uh, yeah, the puppy mill pet stores got to go. What Fuck are them. those? They're they're literally like they put them up, they line them up, and they're like, "This one's this much." I'm like, "What's happening here?" They're like thirteen hundred dollars in the mall. I'm like, people buy pets here. 
Yeah, and then they look like they're dying. I'm they like, these all, animals definitely have worms. They have sores on them. Like, it was so sad. They're not so taking sad. care of. They're in those cages all day. It was so what sad. What a sad life. And sometimes I would go there. I'd go to the mall, like, once a week. I, I would take the town bus to the mall. And the same puppies would be there. It would break my heart. And I would be like, one day I'm going to make enough money to save all of you. I thought the same thing. And I would always play with them when I could convince my dad to go in. Me too. I think I was too young to play with them. Yeah, they wouldn't let us without an adult. Yeah, fucking stupid. That's stupid. I'm like, you're the adult. You work We're here. We're literally volunteer companionship for the animals. You're welcome. Yeah, but what if that dog bit you and your dad wasn't there and then you like could really sue? My dad would be like, fucking idiot, you know not to let yourself get bit. And then you'd sue the fuck out of them, which would... Oh, he probably would. That'd be great. Shout out Benji. Oh Damn. my god. <laughs> Ray keeps calling me Benji. I he, love it. <laughs> Cuz he gets He gets a call and it says my dad's name. So he goes, "Hey, Benji, what's going on?" <laughs> How come that doesn't pop up for me? I don't know. Probably yeah, because you have I my lo- number. We well, started saved. calling you Benji on the phone while I was with him, <laughs> and I was like, "I love this." I was like, that actually has a ring to it. It does have a ring to it. Yo, Benj. Hey, Benji. It's so weird, though. That's my ex, like, high school best friend's name, like, nickname. That is weird. <laughs> so now I'm like, which best friend? Oh, Milk. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows what just happened. <laughs> I can't believe that's where your mind went. That was a traumatic. Ev- that was that a traumatic was my first thought. That was a traumatic event for me, Emily. Okay, one time, <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> we had the Junie B. Jones like diary books. Oh, they I had prompts those. and stuff. And we would go in our closet, and there the closet were like the sh- you know the shelf above where you hang everything. Yeah, it was wide enough, and we were small enough that we would maneuver our way and climb with all hands and feet on the walls and climb up and sit on there and we'd both sit on there like little owls like yeah we, like we would just be like this in each corner That's it, so was, cute. it was our little book our book nook book nook, <laughs> book nook our book <laughs> and we would write in our junie v jones books oh and then one time she was like swiping through her book and i was like i saw my name and i was like what's that and she didn't want to show me and i'm like show me you wrote about me and it was like <laughs> Jamie Lee's breath smells like milk. I think she had cereal. <laughs> and I ate cereal and milk all the time because that's all we had to eat. I forgot that that was the story behind it. For some reason, I thought her breath smelled like milk. So, but I just associated her with milk. <laughs> okay, so she said you smelled like milk. And that like stuck with me for years. That would stick I with me always, too. I would ask people, I'd go up to them, i go, does my breast smell like milk? <laughs> <laughs> I, go, I would be so insecure about it. I'd be like, does my breast smell like milk? And they'd be like, yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> Your oh, mom man. saw those, saw those Got Milk campaigns and was like, yes. <laughs> All yes, we, we have do. when you grow up poor, you have cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're gonna smell like milk. You, whatever. We drink a lot of milk. It was during the milk. I'm not the milk joking. craze. <laughs> they forced milk upon us. I used to drink like glasses of milk. Me too. They what? used to have, make you have a glass of milk at every dinner. Yes. Yeah. Every dinner, and I hated it. I was like, if unless it's chocolate, get it away from me. I kind of now liked it. I like black men. No, I'm just oh. Kidding. I like all. I like all men. Are we gay? <laughs> <laughs> Was that English? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh, do you remember Harriet the Spy? Yeah. I really thought I was going to be Harriet the Spy. Wait, is Harriet the Sp- the Spy <laughs> with <laughs> who's the woman, the girl who played her? I did not speak English. Fuck. Wait, I, I don't know. Who I just her. looked her up. Herberg, <laughs> Michelle Herberg or Harborough. Really? Michelle Trattenberg. Trattenberg. She definitely played Harriet the Spy. I have no... I just oh remember God, reading the books. I don't know if I watched it. Right here. Uh, Harriet the Spy. Oh, my God. This was... We should actually watch this. <laughs> Ready? Oh, stop. Some kids collect insects. Others collect dolls. Harriet M. Welch collects... Secrets. What? What? What was that? 
shake it up, take a That's like nostalgia right there. The style of the filming, oh my god. Wow. <laughs> all right but there's there's also a movie that she's in that was magical too i feel like it was was it the barney movie is that what i'm thinking about the barney movie yeah i think she was in that too i but hated the barney this was Wait, a good the one barney I, I, it was like with eggs or something i liked barney but then i started to despise him and i don't know why but you, you know how you said we're telepathic we yeah. are because i looked her up on instagram today because that's so weird because she was in all these movies that i loved as a kid mm -hmm. and people are commenting on her appearance on instagram call, saying that she looks like sick and old Aww. and like is she okay like her hair her hair's thinning and she's like commenting and she's like fuck you guys i literally am just 38 years old now like i'm not a kid anymore yeah like i'm aging but that has been that was like all of my tiktok this morning i looked her up and then you just mentioned that's so weird yeah that's suspicious what was the first time we were psychic today or telepathic oh we're making clips for laser and we both texted about the same one or i thought of it and you texted it and i was like that's perfect mm -hmm. but, wow nice, nice. I, do we get more makes high? me want a hot dog real Little bad, bad. This is the Stony Baloney segment of the episode. We're going to Pound Town. What's the grossest picture of a medical thing you have on your phone right now? Do not show it to us. A hemorrhoid. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> One time I had a guy, though, think I was cheating on him because he went through my phone, went through my deleted pictures... And saw a close-up picture of me spreading my vagina. And yeah. I was just making sure I had an ingrown hair and not herpes. Oh, But yeah. he was convinced I sent someone that pussy picture. I was like, no, it wasn't even cute. It wasn't a good one. <laughs> there wasn't was no even light. cute. I just wanted to see if I had herp. Bear. Yeah, I got scared I had herpes last week. And I took a picture. But it was just an ingrown hair. So I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens. Okay. Ooh. Straight up. How do you fight dirty in arguments? Oh, uh cold coldness <laughs> cold anger that like seeps to your core <laughs> you have like the stare like they're laser eyes <laughs> i'm like homelander just yeah, your homelander <laughs> you just cut through my heart <laughs> oh um, yeah um how do i fight dirty in fights i try not to fight dirty but I think more so just like I'm aggressive. I can get I can get kind of like aggressive and like masculine. I think I also interpreted that as like we're healing. But what are traits that like we might have used before, you know? Oh, like I used to use words to to destroy you. Like I grew up with an abusive mom yeah. who like verbally abused me so, like and then I got bullied. So I learned how everyone could be mean to me and I never wanted to feel that way. But if I needed to, I could turn around and make you feel that way very easily. So people don't realize how much hate it took for me to be this kind. Sponsored by mm. Laughing Gas. <laughs> Joey Diaz. <laughs> okay. Have you ever had sexy time while someone else was within earshot? Tell us the tale. Have I ever had sex where someone else was in earshot? Yeah, like close to here. I feel like most of the times I've had sex. <laughs> where are you having sex in been public? Like, or like at a party, like you're fucking your boyfriend in the bathroom. You know, he's fucking you. You know? I remember I did have sex with somebody in my bathroom while the bathroom door was open. and the, But the master door was closed. And you and my brother just walked in. And they were like, we're finishing this. And put their hand over my mouth. And I was like, well, that was hot. Yeah. People just showed up in my house and we're almost getting caught yeah it was like 30 seconds but but still you sometimes you just got to finish the job yeah emily oh emily <laughs> opens the door yesterday as i'm mid joe po as a mid jerk off session <laughs> 
And no, I literally out. just yell, I was about to come. Like I was right there. I was getting there and I was about to be like, oh, and then the door <laughs> opens. And I just got, I was like, I fucking panicked. First of all, I panicked and I just threw the, the everything in the drawer. And I was like, that was loud, Jamie. Like she heard that. So now she knows you're masturbating. So then I just yelled, I, I was about to come. I had no idea. I was, I had my headphones in zoning out. Oh, and you were but like. But then I heard you and I was like, bro, with your bedroom door open, that's ballsy. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I like the risk of someone walking in. <laughs> high risk, high, what is it? Either way, if my door was closed, you could hear the hum. The sweet hum of my magic wand. All right. <laughs> the sweet, sweet hum. How many people do you expect to fuck before you die? <laughs> and how far along this journey are you? How many people do I expect to fuck? Well, judging by the numbers, <laughs> it's not looking good. What if I find the love of my life next week? Ow. Oh, fuck. Oh, Th- then it's only one more. So I'm like, that's how I feel. I'm almost Do- there. <laughs> but expect, <laughs> given the percentage um, each year. <laughs> no, actually, I feel like I've been pretty good. Have I? I haven't had sex in how many days? I'm, I have a counter, guys. I started the counter <laughs> for vaping and drinking, but, you know, one's still going strong. So <laughs> it's been 60 days and 16 hours since I last got porked. Since you last got porked. Porked. I hate, <laughs> hate everything about that. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. That was like an old Boston saying, like, me saying cold cocked. <laughs> It's just coming out, man. Yeah. As we get older, we just stop giving a fuck. <laughs> Once it's like when you get dementia, like you start going back to like how you used to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm almost 30 days clean and sober. It's, as we get older, the Boston accent's going to get stronger. I'm excited. Okay. When was someone completely right to break up with you? <laughs> every time. <laughs> <laughs> I think every time someone, me, someone me breaks up. his name broke up. <laughs> So every time someone breaks up with you, they're just like, hey, this is over. And you're like, yep, fair enough. Makes sense. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I can see where this is going. <laughs> I'm uh, surprised you lasted this long. I already pre-abandoned myself. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wrote this out in my in my journal. <laughs> yeah, I've been manifesting this. <laughs> on my vision board. I really do think I just need my next heartbreak. <laughs> that's what i'm looking for i'm not looking for the love of my life i'm looking for somebody to hurt me why i'm not actually it's just a joke <laughs> i think you are maybe i am honestly though every time i have a heartbreak i glow up i become a better person i succeed in life i think and i use it as fuel yeah to be like oh no you'll see just you wait <laughs> i'm gonna be somebody just you watch and wait little man little you're boy. gonna see me on tv everywhere mm. on every podcast on every platform I'm gonna haunt you <laughs> you're gonna go to the bathroom to take a shit at a local <laughs> at a local hotel and all of a sudden it's gonna be a two girls one blunt sticker you're gonna be like how'd this get in the men's ben- bathroom good question i don't know but it's there <laughs> i'm gonna be on the gas station tv you can't fucking escape me <laughs> You're going to be fucking your girlfriend. Her face is just going to morph into me at this point. Yeah, they're working on holograms as we speak. (laughs) I'm out the window with a hologram. (laughs) I pre-programmed all your smart homes. Your Alexas. I actually have been feeding your girlfriend some of my cum every day. (laughs) Whoa, whoa. I took a turn. <laughs> you too far, Emily. I was trying to think like stalking deep. was enough. <laughs> Bodily fluids. <laughs> That's a whole other story. I've been reading a lot of Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> I think you know what that means. <laughs> Do I? I'm, I'm suicidal. <laughs> no. And that's so you think about bodily fluids and doing crazy things like that because you're just like, fuck it. I got nothing else to yeah. live for. Yeah, I guess so. All right, back to the cards. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing you practice kissing on? Like a fruit? <laughs> <laughs> what type of fruit? <laughs> Maybe a banana. <laughs> I don't know. Or, or like what, a doll. I feel like a... Maybe the mirror. The mirror. <laughs> oh my god, made out with the mirror. Why you have never done that? No, I have. 
<laughs> Who hasn't done that? Has everyone made out with their mirror? I think I'm like made out with your hand. <laughs> oh, I used to do my hand all the time. I'd just be like, they're <laughs> 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 like, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh god. Oh yeah, good times. <laughs> cool. We weren't weird. We were right. not cool. <laughs> <laughs> You can only look at one type of porn for the rest of your life. What are you picking? Gangbangs. For sure. Okay. Nice. Right. Someone pointed out that I say for sure, but they spelled it F E R like S H U R E. That's how I would spell it. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And then I, I every time I say it on this podcast, I recognize me going for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. And 30 years ago. <laughs> and my for score. <laughs> for sure. That sounds so weird. For sure. I'm going down to the shore. I'll say shore. But if I say sure. No, it's sure. Sure. Sure is the beach. Sure is like, yeah. Sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> And seven years. Okay. Our forefathers. Oh, this is a an intense question. Never been asked before, ever in our lives. Never. If you could have sex with anyone I've been with before, who would it be? Who have you had sex with? <laughs> I'm thinking of one. You're thinking of one? Well, if you're going after stashes. Or, oh. or any of the people that... There's been people who are both like, oh, yeah, they're cute. And then it happens. Who? Who would it be, Emily? <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, a gun to your head. I know. I don't like this question. All right. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> what would your average poo fit in a sandwich bag? Would I or have I? <laughs> <laughs> would your average poo fit in a sandwich bag? Would my average poo fit? Oh, so you fit it in a sandwich bag? Why have you shit in a bag, Emily? You've shit in a bag? <laughs> Emily's just like, I want to save it for later. <laughs> no. no, I haven't shit in a bag. Who's shit you, in a bag? You just answered that question like you've shit in a bag. <laughs> now everyone's thinking you've shit in a bag along with me. Am I, I wrong? I think you're the only one who's thinking that I shit in a you bag. You said, would I have or have I? And you, as if, and you like unlocked a past memory. What'd you shit in a bag for him? <laughs> who's Did it fit in the bag? <laughs> who pooped? <laughs> Did it fit? No. no, but I have poop poops that could poop in a sandwich bag. <laughs> <laughs> I've shit on the ground. I feel like m- most of the time it's like, it really depends if I have my daily smoothie or not. <laughs> whether or not you shit in a bag? <laughs> no, whether or not it would fit. <laughs> I was like, when do you shit in a bag? <laughs> that was my question to you. I guess we both answered that suspiciously. <laughs> I'm crying. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what, a, what a transition. <laughs> Have you ever had to figure out how to muffle a bathroom emergency in an embarrassingly close space? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. You just muffled that. <laughs> <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> Do you wash your hands after you masturbate? Yes, we mean every time. Why not? Because <laughs> <laughs> I fall asleep after. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy one. Fuck no. Yeah. Plus, I use toys. I'm a lady. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to get our hands dirty. Who in the room has the hottest parent? Um, Definitely your dad. Not me. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> no, I'd say my parents are conventionally attractive. What are the last few things you searched in an incognito browser? What are the last three things you searched in an incognito browser? Comedy uh, stuff. Okay. That uh-huh. sounds suspicious. <laughs> uh, comedy stuff. I swear I'm not involved with the mob. <laughs> no, there was... Um, I think I was trying to look at a profile and it, it kept like automatically logging me in. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't remember why. Or maybe that was just a separate browser than the main browser I was in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so comedy. Pictures of STDs. <laughs> like, what does herpes look like? <laughs> yeah. Why is my shit green? No, I'm just kidding. I looked that up after eating Lucky Charms once. Yeah, one time I was like, why is my shit red? And I had beet juice that day. 
Oh yeah, that happened to me. I thought I was bleeding. I out thought of my I hole. literally was like, I, I'm bleeding. I internally. called my dad. I was like, How bad is it if your poop is red? And he was like, Emily, you should go to the hospital. <laughs> and I then like, I remember, wait. I remember to drink like a full beet juice. Yeah, yeah, I was totally fine. Oh, will you show us the last sex you've sent or received? How recent was it? Emily, that's whip it out. That's so revealing. Whip it out. That's so revealing. Whip it out right now. I'll show it to you, but it's still all me. you have to do is read one, and it could be his. It doesn't have to be yours. Embarrass him. Um, <laughs> it's like I would love to suck on your toes <laughs> and smell it's your butt hole. <laughs> where, where am I? This is so bad. I can tell you're uncomfortable. You're just going um um um. Okay, do it. Do it for the two. It's so explicit. Okay. <laughs> How recent was it? Wait, I have to find one that's not as bad. <laughs> what if it's good? What if they're learning though? If that's oh my god, I almost just sent a voice memo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what if people want to learn how you sex? I haven't sent a sex in a long time. It's usually just like, oh, I want you so bad. I literally go, I want your handprints bruised on my hips. <laughs> okay, Emily. Yeah. That's hot. I said more. <laughs> <laughs> Read it. <laughs> um, oh, I just hit my tooth with the mic um, as I tried to jerk off. I don't know why men always tell me I have little butt cheeks when they're like intimately involved with me. They're like, you have like little butt cheeks. And I'm like, stop. They're small but mighty. Okay? No, they're, ma- they're mad because you have like the fattest ass that's like a bubble butt and they're like pissed off because they don't have a bubble butt. <laughs> they're like, I've been working so hard for all these gains and my butt's not like hers. But he was <laughs> just <laughs> just want to see those little butt cheeks tremble with your face down in the mattress. <laughs> so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. Yeah, no, that's hot. Guys, send that message. What would you think? Rate oh, Emily. I Rate love Emily's sending sex. a message. That, that's creative. I've like lost my ability to be creative, or maybe not my ability to be creative, like in that way, but my desire. When I stopped wanting to prove myself to men. I couldn't, I used to pull that shit out of somewhere real Mm -hmm. hard through the abyss and the hole I was trying to fill. It was coming through a black hole and it would just come out. And now I'm just kind of like, you want me to lay to the side and you put it in? (laughs) I don't know. What's up? You just like flip me like a pancake. (laughs) I am. When I was learning how to like dirty talk, I feel like I literally Googled how to dirty talk. And I was like, what are ways that I can say things that are more interesting to men? And I would look up like scripts and like just kind of like internalize what they said based on the dynamic I know is in my sex life. Yeah. And I feel like that's how I learned how to sex. I feel like I did that too. But then every time I like read things, I was like, ew, I would never say it like this. No, but I would paraphrase or like figure out what the common theme was and then put it in my words. Okay. Pop quiz. Hot shot. Your mom has just caught you with a handful of cum. Explain yourself. I'm making Alfredo sauce. This is Alfredo. In your hand? Yeah. I didn't have a spoon. <laughs> and she she looks over, there's like 10 spoons out. <laughs> I would just be like, oh, it, I'd be like, oh, it's coconut oil. See? Oh, yeah. It's good for my hair. <laughs> Rub it on your face. I'm just doing a facial. Yeah, it's this weird Korean skin mask I got. Off of TikTok shop. <laughs> yeah, you just peel it off. <laughs> if you were abducted by aliens, would you try to escape or would you just lay back and see what happens? I think I would just see what happens. I'm, I try to escape where? I'm probably on a spaceship somewhere or in yeah. Middle Earth. Middle Earth? Hollow Earth. Hollow Earth. You haven't heard those series? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the Muffin Man? <laughs> <laughs> Who lives on Drew Lane? <laughs> yes, I know the Muffin Man. <laughs> I'm the Muffin Man. <laughs> My gumdrop buttons. Oh, was there a family-friendly movie or TV show that inadvertently helped you discover that you're what you're into sexually? The Adams Family, Gomez and Morticia. Like I want a man who's obsessed with me. Oh, who will kiss all over my body and give me roses. That's true. I like Stefan from Vampire Diaries. But see, like, the kind of emo one? Yeah. Okay, I could see that. Like, no, he was, like, the first one that Elena was with. She ended up with Damon. Oh. I always thought Damon was a bad boy and represented all the toxic things that I liked in men because I loved Damon, but I loved how, like, sweet and in love Stefan was. But later in the series, he became very toxic. So basically, you don't win in this situation. Okay, cool. Sounds like my life. 
And that's what I learned from Vampire Diaries. Is <laughs> you never get the one you truly love. Nope. And it will be so good that it'll be so bad you'll want to kill yourself. And you will do it until they bring you back to life because you're a vampire. And that's just in the next lifetime. It's kind of fucked up. I wish I was a vampire so bad. Me too. Where would you, what would you do as the first thing? What would you do? What would be the first thing that you'd do as a vampire? I would figure out my food supply. Well, it's people. Oh. We're in Miami. You're pretty good. You go oh. to the club, no one will even notice. <laughs> That's true. I could just like this take the, a little bit. This would be the best place to be a vampire. But then what if I get infected with drugs? Like I don't want to do drugs and I'd be doing drugs whenever I took from people in Miami. That's true. You take a hit of someone, you're like, That's definitely doozy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, Is it wait? <laughs> like, this- are the shrooms hitting me? My wait. teeth are vibrating. Oh, is this bad bunny? <laughs> Bro, somebody puts on yeah no i'd be fine i would live at the club scene in i'd Miami. be a drug addict and then i would be a good for nothing vampire oh god they can have drug addict vampires they definitely do <laughs> see this is why we need to stop addiction so our vampires are safe because i want to marry one i there's definitely vampires i believe in them i do too <laughs> <laughs> Can you see my my vampire teeth? Mm. I got canines. You do. I grind my teeth. Turn me into a vampire. (laughs) I would love to be turned into a vampire. I, like, dreamed about it, and I was like, this would get me away from my bad childhood. If (laughs) only I was, like, a part of a vampire cult in the middle of a small town. They take care of their people. Yeah. (laughs) If you had to choose, who is the sexiest Pokemon? Ninetales. Okay. I'm I'm thinking, like, original. Um, I feel like Charmander. The sexy dude? Final Evolution. Oh, you're like a big boy. I was. I went for a woman. I'm gay. <laughs> I went for someone that could destroy me. I have mommy issues. I loved all the evolutions of. Uh, wait, is it Nine Tails that I'm thinking of? Or no, um, Eevee. 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 That's I was what thinking I'm thinking Eevee of. Too. Eevee. But what's Nine Tails? Nine Tails is the the Nine Tail Fox, right? Can you bait me when you get a chance? No. Okay. I guess I'll go fuck myself. Nine Tails is still fucking sexy as fuck. That was. Yo, my inner child just thought of that because I didn't even. Touchdown! Nice. Field goal. Flag on the play. Nine tails Pokemon. Beautiful. Oh, oh, sexy. The white one. Okay. Shiny nine tails. Oh my god. Oh. Whoa! Yeah. What, oh my god! Like the ghost one, shiny. No, honestly, wasn't there a Pegasus? Like I would fuck a Pegasus. Okay, what Greek mythology creature would you have sex with? <clears throat> the Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> Just take me. <laughs> Just take me away from all this. I Hercules. Like Hercules. Oh, it could be like God too. I thought you meant creature. Like, oh, something definitely with a human face. Maybe a dragon. Oh, um, a centaur. Yeah, I think that I think I'd fuck a centaur. That's really all. But if we were talking about Ooh, like <coughs> Medusa, you'd fuck Medusa. I wouldn't look at her. <laughs> but I'd, I'd be, I'd be like me. blindfold me, and like she'd be like, "I'm gonna take the blindfolds off," and I'd be like, "No, I'm gonna no, come." Medusa, no. <laughs> You're like red, red. I hope you would have safe words. Yeah, a centaur would be hot, I guess, too. Pegasus? Yeah, I guess I could fuck a Pegasus. What about a werewolf? Oh, I would absolutely fuck a werewolf. Me too. Like, hands down. What if he, like, transformed in your pussy? Well, he really tore that shit up. (laughs) So painful. Okay, under what circumstances would you buy cigarettes or alcohol for a teen who asked you to hook them up? If they were related to me. And I knew they were going to get shit elsewhere. I'd rather they have it safely from me. Like, obviously not like an 11-year-old. But if it's like a 19-year-old. For alcohol and stuff. Yeah. So they're not asking creepy people, like, at the liquor store to do it. or I'd rather my kid drink in the house and they're supervised and safe. Yeah. 
I feel like I would get my high schooler drunk at a young age, like at home. Like I would get them drunk so they know what it feels like to be fucked up. If they're going to go out, if they're like already making that decision, I catch them. Or like, so, you know what I mean? We'd have like wine for dinner like and wine. that would get them drunk. <clears throat> yeah. And, and then, then they would see how they can handle themselves and where. You just, I'd be like, do you see how this is scary? You only had one glass. Like keep mm-hmm. it small. Eat before. I don't think you should be drinking at all. And I'm going to ground you Drink if I catch water. you. But I don't know. <laughs> Describe the worst nude you've ever received consensually. What happened next? Consensually? I've only gotten fire ones. Wow. Rub it in our face, Emily. I feel like I've just gotten some news where guys are like making a weird face. Like they forget their faces in it. Like they're concentrating really hard. <laughs> they're like. Yeah. They're flexing. They're and like, you can tell me. in their face. Uh, yeah. I like like a lean back with like the dick and balls from that angle. And oh, they lean yeah. back and they look at you. I'm like, oh. Like, I'm yours. Just take me. Um, oh, what's your move to dis- to seduce somebody? <laughs> I feel like I just, like, look at them. Yeah, Emily does her eyes. I literally got called out the last time because I do, do eyes. And he was like, you're doing eyes at me. You want me to kiss you? And I was like, okay. Then kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't you? I don't see the... Yeah, I think it's the eyes. Show the camera the eyes. I can't do them unless I, like, like you. Think of the camera as someone you like. I don't like anybody right now. You're starting to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you any, any, any questions? Mm-hmm. We can do I have it. so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> what? None good. <laughs> How often do you sanitize your sex toys? Oh, I just wash them. Me too. But then I'll, like, leave them in the drawer dirty and I won't wash them till the next time I'm about to use them. Same. Yeah, and it's always right after I charged it and I'm like, oh, fuck, I gotta get it in quick. Yeah, it has, like, the vagina crusties on it still. Yep. That, like, peel-off film. Yeah. Good times. Good times. <laughs> oh, I love vaginas. It's kind of like the glue that you'd put on your hand as a kid. And you peel it off. Yeah. Yeah, I used to do that all the time. And I'm like, you know what? It's a satisfying time every time I have to get to it. It really is. I do peel it off, and then I wash it. <laughs> and then I wash my hands. Is that weird? I do it, too. Okay, cool. <laughs> Weird. turns out the secret to perfect health is eating a human flesh hamburger once a week you can get them delivered would you chow down what the fuck that's the weirdest question and what in the illuminati made this game i didn't even know that would be the question no this is dirty it's dirty talk extra dirty truth or dare extra dirty straight up that's extra apocalyptic I feel unsafe. I do not want to eat a human flesh hamburger. No. Did you watch the 100, though, where, like, they're stuck underground for, like, 10 or, like, 15 years? And so they lose uh, access to their food supply. And so the only way for them to eat is they start throwing people who disobey the rules because there's no room to like keep people alive so when you disobey the rules you go into the pit and you fight to the death and then the winner the person who dies they cut him up and then they feed everyone like one meat block and they do that for like 15 years they turn into cannibals and it's heartbreaking because like the woman who like runs it octavia was like the my favorite character and she turned really dark and let everything get to her and she well, became, made everyone cannibals and forced cannibalism literally causes prion diseases and prion diseases eat away at your brain so it totally makes sense for her to become more evil, be- literally, as her brain fucking rots rots away. Yeah. There are holes inside people's brains. Yeah, um, but she made people become cannibals before it started rotting her well, brain. She was fucked before. And then no, no one will do it. And so she just takes it and she like eats it. And she's like, see? Uh, oh, yeah. Everyone's like throwing up. Oh, anyways, God. army hammer. <laughs> I always feel bad for like the people like the soccer teams who get lost in like the Andes and like there are people who are dead and they're I don't know if I would eat somebody I don't think I could eat somebody either I don't think I would ever be at the point I would rather like hunt learn how to hunt or something it wouldn't go well but I'd try (laughs) I wouldn't even know how to cook it I we're fucked stop (laughs) I'm freaking out no we'd be so fucked what do I look for in a man apocalyptic ready Mm mm-hmm yeah facts Generators, (laughs) Generators, <laughs> power supply, a bunker. These are the qualities that I look for in a man. 
Same. Canned food. <laughs> <laughs> Dried food. Astronaut ice cream. What what an episode. Bro, I'm so high. Now we got to go talk in a meeting. Yeah, I have to. I got to get a chai latte on the way down. All right. Let's let's, let's let's go. Guys, we'll see you next week. And uh, yeah, we love you so much. Come to our comedy shows. Stay high. Stay horny. Mwah. Stay fly. <laughs>